Okay, this sermon is entitled, The Doctrine of Justification. I'd like to go over what the Bible says on this uh, very subject. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. I bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's open up with Isaiah chapter number 63. Isaiah chapter number 63, the first seven verses. Okay. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Basra. This that is glorious in his apparel, you know, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine vat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore my own, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it was, excuse me, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of God and the praise of the Lord according to all that, that the Lord hath bestowed on us, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies, and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. Now in verse number three we see a prophecy. It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is the sole justifier. God, the Father, God justifies. It's all one and the same. But in verse 3, we see that he says, I, let's read it again, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will, you know, tread them in mine anger. So basically he's saying there's nobody else beside, you know, Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, you know, talks about the God's loving kindness in, in, in verse 7. Well, what we see is a picture of, you know, a picture of salvation. We, we see that in verse 5. And we see the one who saves is Jesus Christ, the Savior, and he, he's the one who justifies the sinner. And the Bible teaches justification is by faith alone in Christ alone. Justified, what does it mean? What does it mean to be justified? Well, it means cleared of all guilt. It means declared righteous. Now, we, we are sinners, and, and every human being alive is a sinner. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, declares that every human being alive is a sinner. So when a person gets justified, they get declared righteous in spite of the fact that they're not righteous. They, they're still sinners. But we're justified by God's grace. It's We're declared righteous even though we still sin. So we're being cleared of all guilt in the judicial sense, in the legal sense. We're being justified. So let's take a look at some verses on you know justification, and let's look at some verses that where people were trying to justify themselves by their own behavior, by their own works, and how that doesn't work. So turn over to uh, Luke chapter number 16. Luke chapter 16, and let's look at verse uh, 14. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Now, the key words here is before men. Anytime a person is trying to justify themselves with their own behavior, it's always before men, because God does not look upon, you know, man's behavior. We see that in Romans chapter 4. We're going to look at that in a minute. But it says, These people were trying to justify themselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So God knows a person's heart. That's why we can't justify ourselves by our own behavior, by our own works, because our heart is, is, you know, is desperately wicked, the Bible says. So let's turn over to Luke chapter 18, and we see, this, a very, we see a similar account of this, the same type of person, the Pharisee. Luke chapter 18. Let's jump down and look at verse 8. It says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. That's a sad thing when people trusted themselves. The Pharisees were notorious, egregious for this. But see, the thing is, it's not just, you know, the notoriety that the, that the Pharisees get. You know, it's 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 there. It's all over the place. But you know what? There are a lot of people today that are 
just they're likewise just as notorious for trying to justify themselves as well. And it's the modern day legalist. It's the lordship crowd. It's the people that, you know, they claim that you you know, you gotta repent of your sins and live a certain way to prove you're saved or to be saved, and they're they're the same people in the same boat. They're 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 people that are trusting in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So look what he's doing. He's justifying himself. He's, he's pretending to be righteous. He's despising others. That's, that's the one thing, that's the one attribute that accompanies this self-righteous hubris, you know, this pride that, that, that manifests itself you know, when people are trusting in their own selves is they always hate others and they always point the finger down at others and they always try to you know, look, look down on people. And that always happens. It happened in the case of the Pharisee and it happens today. The lordship heretics out there. Okay, they always despise others. They despise sinners. And it's really sad when everyone is a sinner. And all, it, all this does is make them a hypocrite, flat out. Okay, now look what, it, look what it goes on to say. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. That's what we're, we're studying right now, the concept of justification, the doctrine of justification. This man went down justified, the sinner. You know, the sinner who just admitted he was a sinner. He wasn't trying to live up to some standard. He wasn't bragging about how good he was. He just admitted he was a sinner. It said, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now, turn to Romans chapter 4. The people that get justified, you know, are the ones who believe on Jesus Christ. They have faith alone in Christ alone. Now, the alone part is very important. The reason why it's so important is because if you're trusting anything else plus Christ, it's, it cancels what Christ did for, for us. He died on the cross. He was buried and then he rose again. He died on the, to save us. And it, his work on the cross has canceled. It's of none effect if you're not trusting in it. Of course, the work can't be canceled because the work in and of itself cannot be negated or anything because it, it's a perfect work. But you know what? It doesn't apply, is what I'm trying to say, to those that add to it to those that are, that, are, that are trusting in Christ plus sacraments, Christ plus baptism, Christ plus repentance, Christ plus live the good life, Christ plus obedience, Christ plus persevere to the end, Christ plus God chose them, Christ, or you know, before the foundation of the world and, and all this garbage, Christ plus you know, do the good works. It, it doesn't work that way. Because the Bible makes it clear in Romans chapter 4, we're going to look at an example of why it doesn't work. Romans chapter 4, it says right here in the very first verse, it says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Now, this tells you right there, if a person, if Abraham, and if anybody, is justified by works, or any combination of faith plus works, then it says they have whereof to glory, but not before God. In other words, God's not interested in, you, in, in a person bragging about how they live. God's interested in what Jesus Christ did for that person on the cross. God's not interested in their works. Let's keep reading. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's imputed righteousness. Okay, now verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. And pause right there. Who's the one that justifies the ungodly? Jesus Christ. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're justified. You're saved. Okay? Justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So you're not righteous in your behavior, but your faith is counted for righteousness. God says, God sees your faith and says, I'm going to count that righteous. That's what God does. That's imputed righteousness. That's justification by faith alone. So now, let's go down and just read a bunch of scriptures that talk about this. And let's just go over all, a ton of verses that prove this, that we're just justified by faith alone, in Christ alone, or by simply believing. They mean the same thing. There's a ton of verses we're going to look at now. I wanted to go ahead and just kind of lay a foundation for this doctrine. This is an important doctrine. 
It's not to be taken lightly. This is not a sermon that needs to be preached in 10 minutes, in 10 or 15 minutes. This is a, a sermon that needs to be, you know, dealt with, you know, with scrupulosity and with painstaking detail. We need to go by, go back in, in, into the scripture and look at what the, what the Bible says in all these different verses. So let's start off with Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, we'll start with verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now we learn two things here. Actually, we learn three things from this verse. It's all who simply believe on Christ. It's faith faith alone. It's the believer. That's the first thing we learn. The second thing we learn is that we were justified of all sins. Not just some sins. Not just your past sins. Your past, present, and future sins. And it doesn't matter how bad the sin is. It's all things. And then the third thing we learn from this verse is that there's a contrast between what can justify us, just justify us and what can't. The thing that can't justify us is the law of Moses. So we have justification by God himself um, from all things, and it tells us that we can't be justified or saved by the law of Moses, by keeping any law. And I want to go ahead and point something out. Justification means you're saved. Saved means you're justified. They mean the same thing. Some people want to separate the two and try to say, well, we're justified by faith alone, but that's not salvation by faith alone. And that's garbage. And I'm going to cover that at the end of the sermon when we're going to look at the very final verse on that. Now let's turn over to Romans and let's just see a, a bunch of verses that talk about this, being justified. Now it's in the Bible, you know, a lot of different places, you know, and, and the Bible puts a lot of stress on this. So therefore, we should look at a bunch of verses on this. Let's start off with uh, Romans chapter 3. Look at verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh, flesh means man, or person, shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what that what does that tell us? That justification is, is by simply believing on Christ, and it's all an act of God's free grace. That's the crux of free grace theology. And that's why I hold to free grace theology, because we understand justification by faith alone. And see, we don't change what faith is. We're not going to sit there and try to dress faith up and tell, say faith includes all this other stuff. Faith is mixed together with, you know, with a cocktail of other different things like repentance and works and contrition and compunction and remorse and, you know, and, and lugubriosity and you feel sad about your sins and you cry and you call out to God and you confess him as Lord and you mix all that stuff together and that's faith. No, that's not faith. Faith is simply trusting what the Bible says. Faith, according to Hebrews, is the, it's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things you know, not seen. And I, you know, let's, just see if, let's, just, let's just look at that real quick. Faith is basically just taking God at his word. That's what faith means. So when, you, when I say faith alone, I mean we put our faith in Jesus Christ alone. We're not putting our faith in anything else. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is... You know, it's knowing, it's being assured, it's being, you know, fully convinced. That's what faith means. So we, anyone who has faith, they're justified. Now look at verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. See, Paul's declaring God's righteousness. He's not declaring our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. He's declaring his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now what does that tell us? That God is just to justify us. He, he's the one that justifies us because he is just. And the only reason he can justify us is because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die and pay the penalty of our sin judicially at the cross. Okay? And that's why when we believe on Christ, we're going to heaven. We're going to be in heaven with God and all the angels. We're going to see all our loved ones that were saved. We're going to see all the characters in the Bible, all these saints in the Bible that were, that were saved by grace. And we're going to be with God himself because God is the sole justifier. He's the one that justifies. There's, not, there's no other source. It's God alone that justifies. Now let's, read, let's, let's finish out this chapter. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So what that tells us is we're justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That means faith alone. And these stupid 
these stupid Catholics out there that do not believe in justification by faith alone, they want to fuse sanctification into the mix. And you can't do that. Sanctification comes after salvation. And you know what? It's not guaranteed to come for it with it for every believer. And that, that shocks people. They don't like. They don't believe that. But you know what? Not everyone who is saved is 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 is, is, is sanctified in, in that sense. Now they're sanctified positionally. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. One moment in time, instantaneous sanctification positionally. But the experiential sanctification comes after. And it, you know what? Like I said, it's not part of it's not part of salvation, and it's not part of justification. You cannot mix justification with sanctification. They're two separate things. Justification is a legal declaration. Sanctification is an ongoing process of being consecrated and hollowed, you know, and separate and separated and living a godly, holy life, and that's a separate issue. So it says that we're justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God, one, one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish it. Okay, so we see it's God who's the sole justifier. Now turn over to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we, we were justified by faith, and we have peace with God. That means judicially, you know, God the judge is now on our side, and he has justified us, he saved us, and we have peace with God. We don't have to fear hell anymore. Justification is a permanent, one time, and it goes on forever thing. It never changes. Okay, now jump down to verse, let's see. Let's jump down a few verses and look at some more um, of what it says about justification. It talks about that in uh, verse 9. Let's back up to verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we're justified by the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ shed his blood. It talks about that all over the scriptures. He shed his blood for us. He bore upon himself our sins and he shed his blood for us. So it's, it's his blood that justifies us. Now turn over to Romans chapter number... Let's turn over to Romans chapter 8. Romans covers a lot of verses on justification because it's a it's it's a it's a book of the Bible that basically deals with salvation. So in Romans chapter 8, we have the concept of justification found in verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So everyone who is justified is glorified. That means everyone who's saved by grace is gonna is promised a glorified body, and you get that glorif you get it positionally right now. Okay, let's keep reading. It's going to talk about justification, you know, in a few more verses here. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. So if, 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 if God justifies you, then you have nothing to worry about. And that's why it goes on to say in verse 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So it's Christ that died, and it's Christ that just, it's God that justifies. Now turn back to Romans 5. We missed a few key passages. Romans 5, we, we find out that justification is, is a free gift. Justification is a free gift, and we see this in verse 18. It says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So what we see here is that every human being alive, if they're not saved, at the point that they're not saved, they're condemned. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3, 36. Now he that believeth on the Son is not condemned. Or he that believeth on him is not condemned. So we're no longer condemned. That's, that's the thing. You're either condemned or you're justified. Lost people are condemned. Saved or justified. You go from one state to the next. So it, we see here that justification is a free gift. The righteousness of one, that means of Christ. He's the only one that can, that can save. He's the Savior. 
he gives a, he gives us justification as a free gift, and justification is of life. So it's it's eternal life. That's what justification leads to. So we see there, you know, just more aspects about our justification. Like I said, justification, it's not, it does not mean just as if I'd never sinned. It means just as if I'd never sinned and never will sin again, God will reckon, you know, us that way. He declares us, you know, completely free of guilt, completely free of sin. Even though we keep sinning, uh, we're just declared righteous. That's what God does in his word. Now turn over to Romans chapter 4. I, le I left off a few verses on this. Romans chapter 4, look at the last two verses. Romans chapter 4, it says in verses um, 24 and 25, But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So that's what, that's what God did to you know, to justify us, he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross, and then he, of course, rose again from the dead. So it's a completed action. It's done. Okay, now let's turn over to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. More verses on this. Okay, let's look at verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid. So what we see here is that we see three times in verse 16 that it's not by the works of the law. It's just by the faith of Jesus Christ. And that tells us right there that Jesus Christ's faith is perfect. Because our faith, we have faith in Christ as well, but our faith is, is not, it's imperfect. So that's why it's the faith of Christ that saves. If it were up to our faith, it, it, would, you know, it would fail. But that's why the Bible says God is faithful. So now we have the issue of justification in chapter 2. We see this again in chapter 3. Let's start off with verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God... And it was accounted or credited to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So there's justification again in verse 8. All right, so let's look at some more verses on this. I want to I want to cover every single verse pretty much in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you have what what's called the unsaved or the false prophets favorite verses. Now, there are lots of verses in the Bible that the unsaved or the unregenerate or the false prophet or the false convert or the fraud or whatever you want to call them, they they like to use certain verses in James. Because James talks about being justified. Let's go ahead and turn to James real quick. Hold your place in 1 Corinthians, and let's deal with the, with the, uh, the, the, problem, te the problem passages, the problem texts. Turn to James chapter 2. And the false prophets love verses so they can twist. Their verses are not twisted inherently or anything. They just People like to twist them. So what, that's what they do is they go to the verses they can twist. And it's a sad thing because you can't, you can't take a verse and try to contradict you know, clear verses in the scripture, just because, you know, you don't understand the verses, or perhaps you want to twist them because you're a false teacher. But people do, and then this is really sad. So James chapter 2, we see a verse that says, in verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So, and then it goes in verse on to say in verse 24, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. But see, the question is, what does this type of justification mean? Is this salvation? Is this, just, is this justification, salvation? I mean, is this part of being saved? No. This is a different type of justification. See, people, man looks upon another person in, in terms of what they do, in terms of their works. God does not look upon us based on our works, he looks upon us, our faith. So, this is not even talking about being saved. Okay? Because, number one, the people are already saved. How do I know? 
Well, j turn back to James chapter 1. Look at verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye shall fall into divers temptations. Based on what I've studied with James and studied, you know, in terms of a, from a theological background, James has written to believers. And when it talks about being saved in various passages, it's not talking about going to heaven. It's talking about, about being saved doctrinally. Let's say you have a church. Let's say you have a church and you're like, you have a short supply of workers or you have no workers and the, without somebody doing works, like it says, uh, faith without works is dead, then the church is not going to thrive. It's not going to grow. It's not going to, it's not going to amount to anything. So if you, all you have to do is jump back to Galatians, you know, and let's take a look at what we were, what we were just looking at. And let's just jump back to Galatians one more time. And let's look at a verse I have not even covered. It says in chapter three, um, in verse 11, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So even it, it doesn't matter if it says justified in James. They're not justified but, you know, in the sight of God. That no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17. Let's go ahead and turn there. Let's cover Romans 1.17 because that was the verse that actually started this the Reformation in terms of... Um, justification by faith alone as opposed to justification by works or justification by a person actually living a just or righteous life. Romans 1.17 was the verse. You know, Martin Luther, you know, started the whole Reformation, um, and it was, it was verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just or the justified shall live by faith. It actually should say the just by faith shall live, because it's kind of redundant to say that the, that the just shall live by faith. If he's already just, he doesn't, need, he doesn't need faith. So the just by faith shall live. What he's saying is that you're saved by faith, you're justified by faith, and because of that, you're going to live. You're going to live eternally. You're going to have. You're going. You're going to heaven. So that's another verse that's very key in the in the doctrine of justification by faith alone. So now, now that we've got James taken care of in these problem passages, basically what he's saying is that is you know in James he's not talking about being saved. So whatever it means when it says saved or whatever it means when it says justified, it's not the same as Romans where Romans is talking about being saved, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. That represents salvation. You know, peace with God. We're no longer condemned. We're no longer going to hell. We're, we're going to heaven now. So there's a big difference between, you know, Pauline justification and then the James type of justification. And people confuse the two, and it becomes nothing but, nothing but a big problem. That's what Roman Catholicism is. It's a fusion of... Um, you know, sanctification and justification and adding works and stuff. And see, Catholics don't even believe in justification by faith alone. They think imputed righteousness is a myth. <laughs> and they believe in infused righteousness. That's pathetic. That, that's not going to save anyone because, you know, we're sinners. We're too sinful to save ourselves by our own righteousness. That's why we get, uh, we get declared righteous by God himself. Romans 4.11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, or, and, and on and on, all these different places where it talks about that. You know, so now let's go ahead and look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter six. These are famous verses that the lo like I said, the lost like to go to to try to prove that you're not eternally secure, or that um, you can lose your salvation, or you can you can't live any way you want to. Or they try to they try to condemn people based on these sins, and this is a sad thing because everybody is guilty of something on this list if you're being honest about yourself. I'm going to break this down and prove that. And nobody's condemned by any sin. That's why it said in, in Acts chapter 13, you're justified of all things. So take whatever sins are on this list and put that in the, in, in, in the same category, and you're justified of all these things. But, they, but, the, but the unsaved, basically what they're doing, they're operating with no grace. So what they do is they go to verses that, are, that seem to condemn people, but that since there's no Savior for them, they, there's no salvation for them, they just, you know, they, they use these verses to condemn. But see, if you're saved, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. To the saved, no sin can condemn you. So let's go look at their favorite, their lists. Okay, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But now, the thing is, if this was really going to condemn anyone, everyone would be going to hell, and everyone would be condemned, because, some, every, because every human being alive is guilty of something on there. 
Okay, it says in Jeremiah that all men are covetous. So you can't just take a few of these little sins and try to pin them on people and condemn them because you got Id idolatry. That could be anything. That could be television. That could be listening to the radio. So everyone's guilty. And what this is saying is that if you're not saved, if you're unsaved, then that's what you are. You're all these things or whatever. And but if you're saved, you're not. You're not. You're not named after your sin anymore. The Bible says, "For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus." You're a child of God if you're saved, and and that's why you're not called a fornicator. You're not called an idolater. You're not called an adulterer. You're not called effeminate. You're not called a reviler or an extortioner or whatever or a thief. You're just you're just you're just saved by grace. But see, here's what they do: they fail to go to the very next verse. The very next verse describes being saved. It says, "And such were some of you, but ye are washed." but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So even if you commit these sins, you're washed from all your sins. So you can't take a verse like in here <coughs> or in Galatians 5 or in Ephesians where these, all these lists of sins come up, like in Revelation as well, and then, and then start condemning people for these sins. No, because number one, the Bible, the Bible says we're, we're covered of all our sins are washed. It says it in 1 John chapter 1. It says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. So if you're saved, none of these sins are going to be held against you. And everyone is guilty of sin no matter what. So the thing is, you have to go to verse 11 to get the context. We're washed. We're sanctified positionally. And we're justified. And it's by the name of of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So even the Holy Spirit, you know, promises us that we're justified. So now let's turn over to Titus chapter number 3. And like I said, there, there's a ton of verses on justification, but I want to go ahead and just close with like, you know, two more. And this also proves that anyone who is justified, anyone who is justified is saved and going to heaven. There's no such, there's no such thing as a justified you know, person who, who's, who may not go to heaven. And I don't know what these people are talking about when they say we're justified by faith alone, but salvation's not by faith alone. That doesn't even make sense. Okay, and the people that say that are a bunch of false prophets, they're liars, and I don't know where they get this. Well, they, number one, they just make it up. And it's just, just, it's just a sad thing. So turn over to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 Let's start off with verse 4, and, and, and just, just for the record, I want to make sure that people know that justification is found all over the New Testament, but it's also found in the Old Testament as well, and it's the same concept. It's the same legal declaration you know, that it is in the New Testament. It's the same thing. We're going to look at a, a couple of verses in the Old Testament as well, but let's, start, let's look at uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So we're justified by God's grace, and it promises us hope of eternal life. So we have eternal life. Now let's turn over to Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 43. Old Testament. Let's see. And it's always been this way. I mean, in the Old Testament, people were saved and justified by faith alone, in, you know, in, in Christ, faith in you know, the coming Messiah, faith in God. And in the New Testament, it's the same thing, faith alone in Christ alone. And that's what the Bible teaches. So turn over to Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 43, and let's take a look at um, two verses here. Okay, now let's look at a couple verses here. It's, start with verse 24. The, the very concept of being justified and having all your sins washed away, covered, your declared righteous is found right here in the Old Testament. It says, Thou hast brought me to sweet Cain with money, Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Okay, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So it's, it's telling us that it's God who's, who's doing the justifying here. 
Okay, it's it's I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions. So he's he's blotting out all your sins. It's like your record's clean now. Now turn over to Isaiah 50, um, 53, and we'll look at one more verse on this, and I'll close. Isaiah chapter 53, and let's look at verse 11. So I want to just basically let people know that justification is all throughout the Bible. It's not just a New Testament doctrine. It's found right here in verse 11. It's talking about Jesus Christ. We know that because we, we see all these different you know, prophetic scriptures. Like in verse 9, and he, made, and he made his grave with the wicked. It's talking about Christ. Okay, so look at verse 11. It reads, He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant, that's Jesus Christ, my righteous servant, He's the one that's righteous. He's the, 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 you know, he was the sinless Savior. Okay, my righteous servant justify, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So that tells us that the people who are saved are justified by faith alone, in Christ alone, and it's because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. He died on the cross for our sins, he was buried, and then he rose again, and the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that verse, the you know, most popular verse in the whole Bible, ties, in, ties very well into this very topic, because... Being justified has to mean something. It has to it has to do something. And what it does is it promises us that our sins, even though we're big time sinners, our sins will never be held against us. And the penalty of our sins, which is the you know which is death, the wages of sin is death. You know, death in hell, the second death, it's been removed. So that's why it says anyone who believes on Christ should not perish, but have everlasting life, because you're justified. You know, from you're justified from all things. You're not going to perish because your sins are not going to be held against you anymore. So yes, even John three sixteen ties into this doctrine. So let's turn over to Psalm one thirty, and I'm going to close with a couple verses. Okay, the doctrine of justification is based on the idea and the understanding that everyone is a sinner, and everyone needs salvation and justification. And we've I've already went over. You're justified by believing on Christ by faith alone. So we see this picture here in the Old Testament. It says in verse three, "If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand?" See, when you're not justified, all your sins and all your iniquities and, and sin and iniquity it can be used interchangeably. Iniquity can be the source of a sin. It can just be referring to a sin. It can be. Ref it's just all the same, really. But see, if we're not justified, all our sins are on our you know are, are still on our on our our account. And if if you're if you die in your sins, you're not justified. You're going to hell. You're condemned. So that's why he's saying, "O Lord, thou if thou shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand?" And the answer is nobody. If God's not going to justify the, the the sinner, if God's not going to justify, if God doesn't justify the heathen or the sinner or or the the person who believes, if God doesn't justify you, you'll be you'll be in your sin. And and you know, and you know what? Nobody can stand is what he's saying there. So thank God we are justified by grace through faith alone in Christ alone, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So because of this, I can read out the next few verses, which make lots of sense now. It says, But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doeth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. So we have, we get justification, we get, you know, we're saved, redeemed, plenteous redemption, and there's it's to total mercy and total forgiveness. And we, we see it all right there. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what the Bible says on this very subject, that justification is by faith alone, in Christ alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. Keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.